We bless you, Lord, in your greatness. We magnify your name. Speak to us in your word, we pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Turn with me to um, the Gospel of John. The Gospel of John. And uh, just before that, I want to read just a few verses. Matthew chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4. Jesus was led in the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And after he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. And the tempter approached him and said, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become bread. When has ever God made bread? From stones. But he answered, It is written, You shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Can you say Amen? John chapter 6, verse 25. There's a story that is running over here. There has been um, the feeding of 5,000 people. That is the background. Chapter uh, 6, verses 1, uh, down to um, verse 15. And um, it says, when the people, in verse 14, saw the sign he had done, they said, this really is the prophet who has come into the world. Therefore, when Jesus knew that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, you see, when somebody has fed more than 5,000 people, what do you want to do? You want to make him king because you want more bread. He has then walked on the water, and we get to verse 23, 22. The next day, the crowd that had stayed on the other side of the sea knew that there had been only one boat. And they knew that Jesus had boarded the boat with his disciples. And so the story goes. And some boats with Tiberias came near to the place where they, where they had ate bread and the Bread after the Lord gave thanks, and when the crowd saw neither Jesus nor the disciples were there, they got into the boats and went to Capernaum looking for Jesus. And when they found him on the other side of the sea, they said, Rabbi, teacher, when, how did you get here? I think you know the story. And Jesus had answered, I assure you, you are looking for me, this is very important, not because you saw the signs, but because you ate loaves of bread and fish, and you were filled. Don't work for the food that perishes, but the food that lasts for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. Because God the Father has set his seal of approval on him. What can we do to perform the works of God, they asked. Jesus replied, this is the work of God, that you believe in the one whom he sent. What sign then are you going to do so that we can see and believe you, they asked. What are you going to perform? Our fathers ate manna in the wilderness. Note that. Just as it is written, you gave them bread from heaven to eat. Jesus said to them, I assure you, Moses didn't give you the bread from heaven, but my Father gives you the real bread from heaven. 
For the bread of God is the one who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. And then they said, Sir, give us this bread always. And I hope you're there today. Give us this bread always. I am the bread of life. Jesus told them, No one comes to me, will ever be hungry, and no one who believes in me will ever be thirsty again. I would say a tall order. You know, if you look at um, this passage of Scripture, your mind goes to the issue of bread. And you're going to see the various levels at which Jesus talks about bread. You know, bread, if I look around me and I look around uh, people in supermarkets or grocery stores or whatever it is, the single item that I see most often bought is bread. Most frequently at a traffic light, the request that I've had is, Dear Fonny Song, Una Song. In fact, it's interesting going to the back ends of beyond in the, the Eastern Cape, things have changed a little bit. Years ago, they used to ask for Songka. Have you Una Songka? Have you brought some bread with you? And then I discovered our time has changed. After a little while, they weren't asking for bread. They were saying, Unaima sweet, if you got some sweets. <laughs> and then one day I was surprised. I came along and they said, Ufunu charge cell phone, yum. We want you please to charge our cell phone. <laughs> Interesting our bread has changed, eh? We've just come from the scene of the feeding of the 5,000. As you know, there were more than 5,000 there. There were women there as well. And there were children there. Maybe seven, eight, whatever thousand of people. And this was an incredible cataclysmic event. In between is the walking of Jesus on the water. There's confusion of how he got from this side to that side. And there is confusion as to where Jesus is, where he's gone, and what now? That's where we are coming today. And of course, when somebody is able to provide the basic necessities of life, and they can do it amazingly, and they can do it miraculously, and they can do it to multitudes of people one of the first things we want to do is let's make him the king. If we can make him the king, he can feed us always. I mean, that's how we think. If you could have your grocery bill taken care of you by whoever, whatever politician is coming to power, and he says, I'll look after your grocery bill, you'd make him king. He's got your vote. That's what's happening. People are confused. We've seen this miracle. We've seen this person. We've heard what he has said. I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry again. Whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Notice how the bread and the thirst go together. It is to the Samaritan woman that Jesus spoke to her and spoke about being thirsty. Give me something to drink. Ma'am, well, you can take from this well and you will thirst again. But if you drink from the streams of living water, out of your belly shall come streams of living water and you will never thirst again. You're going to get how the interplay is taking place. Starting with the most basic need in life. I need bread and water. To actually drinking and eating from heaven. They even got confused in the Old Testament and they said, Moses gave us, ah, God said, uh, Jesus said, don't forget, God gave it to Moses to give to you. They've forgotten God in the equation. 
So today we are looking at this incredible uh, story which is before us. And you remember how when there was a miracle and uh, the, uh, Jesus said, and Abraham uh, said this, and, I, and they said, are you greater than Abraham? And he said these words, before Abraham was, I am. And here comes the I am. And he develops it into seven I am's, which we are going to be looking at over a number of weeks and months. The I am's that are going to meet your need. Just like those names of God that we sang were meeting a particular need in a person's life. To Abraham, to Moses, to Solomon, to David, a particular name at a particular time. It could be that there is an I am that you need at a particular time. So let's go to the background. Let's click on to the next slide and get a little bit of background. Looking at the miraculous bread of the Old Testament. You see, this wasn't new. Nothing is new here. What is new is that Jesus is doing it. That is what is new. And if you look, for example, at Psalm 105 verse 39, it says, The Lord spread a cloud. Now there are always clouds around, and we know that for sure, but He spread a cloud above them. That is the miracle, as a covering by day, and He gave them a great fire. There is a fire each and everywhere around the world, but He gave them a great fire to light their way in the darkness. You got that? There is covering. Psalm 105 verse 40. They asked for meat and he sent them quails. A quail is like a little chicken. It's a very fast and in fact it's a very popular sport in different parts of the world of shooting quail with shotguns and that. They're a tiny, tiny little bird and they, they come out of, of, of nowhere and um, these quails, they asked for quail and listen to what it says. He satisfied their hunger with manna. Bread from heaven. Very interesting is what is happening because this also is the background to the Lord's Prayer that you prayed at the opening of the service. Give us today our daily bread. Because it's happened before. For 40 years. In time of transition. God was able to provide for these people with this incredible bread. Which came like from frost in the morning. And somehow solidified and became like a wafer kind of bread. Psalm 105 verse 41. He split a rock and water gushed out. Now this is a phenomenon which you can find in the desert. Where in fact in many big rocks there is a cavity and it is filled with water. And if you know when and how to strike, remember the whole issue with Moses, strike the rock. And he held back and he said, why did you hold back? Strike the rock and he struck again and water gushed out. In fact, some of the water that you've bottled water that you buy is water that they've drilled down into a cavity of a rock. I had a friend, in fact, who's involved with a very big company near Pretoria, drilled in and perfectly clear crystal water inside a cavity in a rock. He split the rock open and water gushed out to form a river through the dry wasteland. In John chapter 60, verse 30 to 31, they answered, show us a miraculous sign. If you want us to believe in you, what can you do? After all, our ancestors, here it is, ate manna while they journeyed through the wilderness. The scripture says, Moses gave them bread from heaven to eat. It's very interesting, if you look at this history and this background, and of course, you could go into it a lot more. 
how God provided miraculously if you are in a time of transition. It could be that you're between jobs at the moment. It could be that you're between security and insecurity at the moment. You know what I've discovered? I've discovered that God miraculously opens ways for you when you are in times of transition and insecurity. Just hold that thought and look for the answer when God is actually doing that and as he makes provision for you. So this whole background is there. We could look at it and, and so on. But it's very interesting. The minute they crossed the Jordan, after crossing the Jordan into the promised land, these miracles stopped. When you get a job and suddenly you get given a paycheck at the end of the month and you get an EFT uh, in, in your account, God doesn't carry on with the miracles he provided you last week when you had nothing. Now he equips your hand and your feet and gets you to till the soil and to make provision. He doesn't give you bread, he gets you to make bread. Hello? You see, if you don't get that one, you're going to miss and say, Lord, where are you now? No, 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 I've, I've actually provided for you. You've actually got the means. In fact, you've got more than the means. Out of your abundance, you can supply for the needs of others. I've seen it in my own life. I've seen it in the lives of, of many people, the miracles I could share with you when I was a student, talking about students who are at college and starting a college. I can tell you about miracles which are impossible. But the minute I finished college and those difficult and tough days, I was provided with a church. Those miracles stopped as provision was made in what is called the normal way. But, for those of you in between, call on the Lord, give me this day, my daily bread. And what God could do by providing protein, what God could do by providing carbohydrates, what God could do by providing water, which are the three ingredients that you need, and shelter, in times of sun or light, in times of darkness, is what happened for 40 years. Is our God not great? How great, how great is our God? That's the background. Let's go on to the next one. The miraculous bread of the Old Testament. On to the next slide. Next slide, next slide. The meaning, the meaningful bread of the word, the meaningful bread of the word. Jesus now has to engage them in this supply demand kind of environment. You have provided, I've received, we have just seen a miracle. Five, six, seven, eight thousand people were provided. And he goes on to the next step and he speaks to them about the meaningful bread of the word. During this time, the devil came, according, according to Matthew chapter 4, verses 3 and 4, and said to him, If you are the Son of God, make these stones, these rocks, loads of bread. Jesus said to them, No, the scripture says, people do not live by bread alone. Doesn't say we don't need bread. Of course we need bread. God knows you need bread. He made it that you need bread and everything else that goes with it. But you don't need bread alone. You can have everything physically provided for you and you can be spiritually dead. But by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God which you will find written. Notice when he faces the devil, he doesn't say, oh God, what must I say now? He says, it is written. He knew his Bible, went to the book of Deuteronomy, and he found for every tempt. He doesn't stand there and say, I don't know what to say. Oh, I'm just a little miserable Christian. Oh, devil, you sound so great. And yeah, you say I should throw. It is written. And you know what? Sometimes you won't feel it, but you say it. And speak it, because it is the word of God. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. 
Whoever comes to me will never be hungry again. Whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. But you haven't believed in me, even though you have seen me and heard me. You know, sometimes when you're hungry and sometimes going through difficult times, you almost say, bread is more important than the word of God. I want to tell you, the word of God is more important than bread. That's what Jesus is saying. I'll give you an illustration. Dr. Billy Graham, you've heard me mention him. The American evangelist who has spoken to more people in the flesh than any other in the world ever. And in his 90s, a few years ago, he passed away. And um, one day in the middle of his campaigning and in the middle of his fundraising, you can't campaign without funding and all that goes with it. Eventually, there was one of his sidekicks, one of his uh, administrators who said, Dr. Graham, there is a man who has given you an invitation. Oh, invitation. Where am I going to preach? He said, no, no, no. It's a, it's a very different invitation. This man and his family live on an island off the coast of the United States of America, and they own the island. And this man has heard you preach, and he wants to speak to you. So Dr. Graham was a very enterprising sort of man. He said, well, I think we should go and see him. <laughs> so they got in a helicopter, provided on a particular day, they crossed over the uh, whatever ocean it was, and they got to this, and they were welcomed, taken, of course, into the home, and the meal was set. They didn't know each other. They'd never seen each other before. And the man's opening, being uh, the type of enterprising man that he was, said to Dr. Graham, I think you can see, sir, that I have everything that opens and shuts. He said, sure, I can see it. And, I mean, the table was laid, the servants were serving, and, I mean, everything. And they sat down and they had the meal. At the end, he said, Dr. Graham, can I speak to you just a while? Sure, they went to the side. He said, you know what, I have all these things, but I don't know what it means. I don't know where I am going and I don't know what life means. It was right there, Dr. Graham said, do you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ? He said, tell me who he is, told him who he was. Right there, that man confessed Jesus Christ as Lord, and he began to be a man who didn't hunger anymore. Although he was eating the very best on his own island, he was hungry. A Samaritan woman, she was thirsty. And when she drank, Jesus said of, speaking of the Holy Spirit, when she drank, she was able to run into the city and saying, I've had a man who has told me every single thing I've ever done and he has forgiven me. The meaningful bread of the word. The third thing I want to share with you as we get into the next one is the marvelous bread of feeding the 5,000 and the 4,000. Some people wonder, was it two events? Was it one event? Of course it was two events. 4,000 and 5,000 are very different. They're different locations as well when you go and read in the scripture. Jesus replied, I tell you the truth. You want to be with me because I fed you. And you know, that will even happen. You'll be in the church and you say, you know, they gave me a parcel. You'll even be maybe out in the open where you, on Saturday. And some of those guys will say, I want to be with you because you came and fed me. I like your soup. No, you need more than soup. You need the bread of life which will get you up to make soup. And he's addressing this thing, this marvelous bread of feeding the Father. You want to be with me because I fed you, not because you understood the miraculous sign. I mean, they didn't even see the sign. They ate the food. I would ask, where does this food come from? I mean, that's what I would ask. 
Where does this food come from? There are no shops here, no Kentucky Fried Chicken, nothing. Where did it come from? It came from Jesus taking five loaves and two and two five loaves and two fishes. And it says he closed, he looked to heaven, and he blessed it, and he broke and broke and broke. And that food came from God through the gift of a boy into the lives of thousands of people. Did you see that? You remember the day the disciples came to the great temple building? And we always get impressed with things. Lord, just look at this incredible building. Look at the, look at the stones. And it says they were just near the offering place. There was a special place where hundreds of people would come and you would put in your offering, your tithes, which in the temple. And they were saying to Jesus, look at that, look at that. Imagine if they did this at Lindhurst Baptist Church. Look at that. And suddenly a widow came and it says she had two coins like our two 10 cent pieces that you have, often I find them lying in the car park because they're actually worth nothing unless you can actually pick up about, a, about 10 of them. And you might be able to get a little bit of bubble gum. And she put two in and by her posture and how she did it, it said it was her last. And he said, did you see that? You see, it wasn't how big the offering was, it was the heart that gave it. And what she was saying, I'm giving my last two 10% pieces from South African currency, and after this, I've got nothing. And I want to tell you something, Jesus was saying, I bet you God supplied her need. I bet you, because that's what he does. In Psalm 37, verse 25, in fact, the Lord gave me this verse when I was just a young man setting out for ministry. Psalm 37, verse 25, once I was young. And there's some of you in this building who are young. Amen. Some of you under 20. I notice you, my brother, keep quiet. Eh? <laughs> some of you under 30. you young. Listen to when I was young. And now I am old. Amen. few of you. <laughs> Listen to this. Yet I have never seen the godly abandoned or their children begging for bread. Brother Kay, can you see what happened in between somebody trusted God from being a shepherd boy to fighting Goliath to becoming king, he said, I have heard a man curse my God. Just give me my sling and give me five smooth stones and I will quieten him. That became the king. This is the man who said, I was young. By the way, he came with a lunch pack to share with his brothers who were supposed to be the military fighters of Israel. It was him who ended as a young teenage boy winning the victory for the nation. I was young. Now I'm old. Imagine there's all gone in between. He says, I have never, never, that's what the scripture says, seen the godly, that is who trust God with the bread of life, not just the bread of eating or their children begging for bread. The last thing I want to share with you, which is very interesting, and it's going to lead into your service next week. First Sunday of a month is a communion time. And I want you to look at what I'm calling the mystical bread of Jesus. Listen to these words here in John chapter 6, 53 to 58. I tell you the truth. 
unless you eat, not bread, not quail, not drink water that has miraculously been opened up for you in the desert, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink His blood, you cannot have eternal life within you. Jesus wanted a shock response. Which is exactly what you're saying. Ah, 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 ah. I just, that's exactly what he wants from you right now. Because listen to what he says. Anyone who eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life. And I will raise that person on the last day. For my flesh, my person, not my flesh on my bones, my flesh coming in the flesh, the word became flesh, is actually true flu food and my blood is actually true drink. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. Anyone who eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in him. This is the mystery. It's the mystery of when you're going to take that bread and pass it around. It's the mystery of taking that cup that gets so faithfully prepared month by month. And you take that cup in your hand and you take that bread. The mystery of you looking at it and you say, what is this? Well, it is it depends on just where you are. But what this is, is a sacrificial life and blood that has been given for you. But more than that, I'm entering into a mystery of sharing with you. And as I eat the symbol, I'm joining with you. Mm. I live... Because of the living Father who sent me. In the same way, anyone who feeds on me will live because of me. I am the true bread that came down from heaven. Anyone who eats this bread will not die as your ancestors did. Even though they ate the manna in the desert, but they will live forever. Hypothetically, I mean, who on this earth? You can live on your own island and go to hell. You can have a ticket for food to pick and pay and spar and checkers and go to hell. Not that you want to. Because there's more than that. There's more than that. There's more than that. Do you see how Jesus has been interplaying bread four different levels? Bread in the Old Testament given, no, not by Moses, but by God. Bread in the Word. It's not just bread that Satan wants to give you, changing rocks and faking a miracle. Bread that is actually more than that. It is actually participating and seeing the sign that Jesus is the bread of life who is able to give bread because he does what his father wants. And then he leaves us as often as you do this, remember me, this has been given for you. And as you sit in the service next week, the mystery, the mystery of drinking his blood and eating his body. And as it goes into me physically, I welcome his person and I receive his blood and I stand in awe. I am the bread of life. I am the bread of life. 
Practically, I want to leave with you just two things. <laughs> yeah, Pastor Martin, yeah, like in Donning Hook, what would I now do? I mean, yeah, I could you, but yeah, you know, you've gone like, like over the top here a little bit today. Well, that's where it's supposed to go. What about this week? May I appeal to you, share regularly in the communion service and br of bread and wine. And in fact, the early church met daily in little groups and they shared from the table. Here's some bread and there's a cup. Let's remember him. There's something special to remember him. Be sure that you know him as you remember him. And secondly, Look beyond the advertising schedule on your television and on your phone to something that is more than physical, to that which is spiritual. Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. And all these things, zin do. Seek first the kingdom. First. First. And then when you eat, you can give thanks and say, Lord, this comes from you. And it's not actually from Moses. This is not actually from my boss. This is not actually from my company. This is not actually from my rewards or whatever it is. This God made as possible for me to have. And therefore, I can be alive. That I can live. And the resurrection will not be a surprise to you because you already live. Seek more than the physical. Can you say amen? Let's say it together. Lord, I seek you today. Not just because of what you've given me but because of who you are in my heart I drink your blood and I eat your flesh and so I live and so I live and he told me everything of what I ever did Amen.